What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in this video, you're gonna learn how to update the camera views for multiple scenes so that they all have the same camera location. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a 3D warehouse model that I've downloaded for this example. It's the NW Contemporary from Stephen C. if you wanna download it and follow along. And so the issue that we're running into is a lot of the time when you're trying to send things over to layout, or I guess even when you're not, you, you have different views and you want them to look different ways, right? So for example, when we create our floor plan view, we want this floor plan view to be in parallel projection from a top view, which I've set up right here. Um, however, a lot of the time what happens is we wanna stack different viewports together. And so the problem with stacking different viewports together is say that we've got this view right here that has our model, but then we also wanna stack this other layer on top of it that has our line work. Right, So that's a very common thing that you do when you send things over to layout because you can kind of control the line weights separately by doing this. So you have a line work layer um, or scene and then a rest of your model scene. But you can see how right here, the problem that we're running into at the moment is that whenever I click between these, they have different camera locations. And that's a problem because they need to be in the exact same location. So when we stack them together in layout, um, they're not like jumping around on us. Right? So there's two ways that I want to show you how to do this, actually. So the first way is very simple. So right now we've got our scene one in here. Well, there's an option. If I go to scene two and we go to camera, you can click on the option for previous. Well, when you click on the option for previous, what that's going to do is that's going to move your camera to whatever the last camera location was. So all you have to do is click on scene one right here in order to get the camera view. And then when you click over to scene two, you can just do a camera previous and you can right click on the scene right here and you can update the scene. So what we've done is we've basically updated our camera location in the second scene to match the camera location in the first scene. So notice how right here, right now, these are in exactly the same location, just like this. So we can use that in order to easily do that. Now, let's say that we had multiple different camera views. So say, for example, that we wanted to take this and we wanted to stack maybe our, um, say, say that we wanted to stack our built-ins here on top of everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to toggle our built-ins off on this view right here, and we're going to update this scene. Well, then we're going to create a new scene that just has our built-ins on it. Right, so I'm gonna talk about my built-ins back on right here. And he's organized these things a little bit weird. There's more than just cabinets in here. There's other things that are built in as well, but it's good enough for what we're trying to do right now. So let's say that we had this, this was our built-ins. This was our line work. This was our base right here. And let's say that these all had different camera locations. So say that you came in here and you accidentally moved this camera right here so that it's not aligned. And then we accidentally moved our built-ins, which I forgot to update. There we go. Something like this, right? Now, the issue now is that we have multiple different camera locations or camera views that are all different. And so if we tried to stack all of this together, that would be really problematic. Well, what we can do is if we go to this base view right here, so we wanna pick the view that has the camera that we want. Well, if you go into your scenes, you actually have the ability to select multiple different scenes. So in this case, I did a control click right here in order to select both of these. So I did a click, control click. Well, now what we can do is we can right click on this and we can select the option for update scenes. And so when we do that, notice how it gives us a list of properties to update. Well, in this case, we want to uncheck everything except our camera location right here. So now what I've done is I've said, okay, I want to update these two scenes with the camera location of the first scene. So all I have to do is click on the option for update. Then when I do that, if I click back and forth across these, notice how now they have the exact same camera location across both of them like this. And so what that means is that means that now if we send this over to layout, right, we're going to do a file, send to layout. I think it's going to make me save my model first. And we can go ahead and just pick maybe this like A4 sheet right here. So what we've done is we've sent that view to layout. Well, I can adjust this and I can pick a scene. So I've got my base scene 
right here. We want to make sure that we set this to scale. So maybe one inch equals 10 foot right here. But now what I can do, and this is always a good idea. You want to go ahead and do this um, pretty much every time you create something in layout. I talk a lot more about this in my course, by the way, I'm explaining exactly how to set up your models. But in this case, we want viewport dash base. But then I also want a layer for viewport dash line work. And I want a layer for viewport dash built-ins. So each one of those viewports is going to go on its own layer. Because remember, we're going to stack these together. But I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it on the viewport base layer. And then I'm going to do a right click and copy. I'm going to click on this viewport right here. And I like to lock this after I'm done so I can't accidentally move it around. But then I want to click on the line work layer and I'm going to do an edit paste to current layer. That's going to take that viewport and paste the copy of it to this line work layer. Well, then we can right click on this. We can go to scenes. We can toggle this one to our line work. And in this case, we want to set this one to vector rendered, right? Because what that's going to do, and we might actually set it to hybrid so that we get the faces that are in here, but that's going to set this in here where it's got the much smoother line work right here, but we're not getting the negative performance implications of having the other stuff um, set to a hybrid layer. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to click on my built-ins and I'm going to do an edit paste to current layer again. Well, this time I want to right click on that and I want to set this to my built-ins right here. And so your built-ins, you could also have that as hybrid or you could have it as vector. You could do whatever you want with that. Um, so something like this, but in this case, I want it to be hybrid. So now what I've got is I've got three layers stacked on top of each other over here, but they all have the exact same camera. And so where that can get kind of interesting is you can start doing things with the different layers that you stack together, right? For example, um, in this case, I've got all of the built-ins on this built-in layer. Well, what I might do for this view is I might want to use the color by layer functionality um, inside of my tags, so or color by tag. So I'm just going to click in here. And in this case, I want to say, okay, everything that's in here, and I'm just going to use the RGB right here. So I want, when I do a color by tag right here, what I can do is I could set this up where it has lower opacity. So I could set the opacity to something like 70 right here. And this is good for you being able to see through things like countertops and things like that. If you want to show the boxes underneath, but now if I save this and I go back into layout, right here, and I do a update model reference. I'm going to do a file document setup references, and I'll update my model reference to get the newest version right here. Oh, and we, we need to make sure that we save that opacity to our built-ins scene before we do that. So I'm just going to save this as a new style, do a file, save. And I guess we can just right click here and do an update model reference as well. But notice how now that gets brought in here with less opacity so you can kind of see through it. So by stacking our different layers together, we can get different effects um, inside of layout itself. And I might bring this down even more. So I might bring my opacity down to like 45. Hit okay. I wanna make sure that we update. Actually, no, we're good. We'll right click and we'll update our scene. We'll do a file save. We'll go back into layout right here, update our model reference, and notice how you can see through that even more. So by stacking these together, you can get interesting looks inside of layout.
And so if you want to get a really great in-depth example model where I've done this, annual members of the SketchUp Essentials course get access to my example model library, which um, contains models where I've actually done all of this and set it all up. So you can see how this one, for example, I've got um, different layers stacked together. So I've got demo files inside of layout so you can see exactly how I've set all of this stuff up. Um, so if you are looking for some better examples of how this can work, um, you should definitely check that out. I will link to that in the notes down below. All right. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew how to do this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.